so the energy sector is currently experiencing a fundamental shift towards uh, renewable decarbonized energy systems due to declining cost of renewable energy systems and the proliferation of affordable energy efficient appliances and also the use of mobile transaction platforms. Uh, the uh, international, we know from the international energy reports that uh, uh, in spite of uh, the increase of renewable energy and increase of energy access, we still have uh, around 8 million people living and uh, 2.8 million people uh, still relying on solid biomass uh, fuels. And thus, a, a, a great percentage of the world's population is still deprived of the benefits of modern energy. We also find that, uh, and through energy years, uh, 25 years of experience, uh, we find for our work, uh, from our work in developing countries that women are disproportionately impacted by the lack of energy access. They bear the most responsibility for uh, uh, 60 to 80 percent of unpowered uh, household tasks, such as collecting water, firewood, and uh, for cleaning and for washing. The outbreak of COVID-19 has uh, also exacerbated uh, this unpaid, care, unpaid uh, care work in homes due to social distancing, uh, school closures and homeschooling, and heightened the needs uh, and the roles that play for caring for the uh, and providing for the, uh, uh, for the family as the home has become the center uh, for most of what we do. Um, we also find that the lack of energy access has an impact on women's employment and businesses, especially given the fact that the majority of women's businesses are found in the informal sector, um, uh, 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 women making up the majority of informal workers and entrepreneurs, earning less, saving less and holding more insecure jobs. Climate change too also has an impact on uh, women and men's assets and well-being. Uh, and impacts them differently, often uh, amplifying the gender inequalities, such as women's unequal access to land and water and other productive uh, assets. Um, these are also compounded by women's limited mobility and decision-making po um, uh, power in, uh, in many contexts. Um, we also find that increasing frequency and intensity of extreme weather events and natural disasters, including droughts, landslides, fires and floods, is on the rise. This too disproportionately negatively impacts on uh, women and children who are 14 times uh, more likely than men to die during uh, disasters, according, to, uh, according to, to UN women. In terms of the enabling environment, um, and I think uh, we have the next uh, a speaker that will speak more to this, but reports from the International Renewable Energy Agency and the Women's Environment and Development Organization, WIDO, have observed that um, national policies and frameworks on climate and energy incorporate to a very limited extent either commitments to renewable energy but also to gender. Uh, this was done through a study that observed that out of 190 INDCs, only 64 included references to gender equality and 132 included renewable energy uh, uh, targets. However, at the same time, we do find, let's, that's the problem, let's, find to, let's move to the solutions. At the same time, we find that, clim uh, that um, women do play a critical role in response to climate change. And renewable energy is quite unique in that it offers both an opportunity to adapt, but also to mitigate the impacts of climate change. Uh, in this respect, I'm going to speak in more details about the solutions through the case studies, but just briefly, solutions that we find to mitigate inequalities uh, and uh, the inter as a result of the intersectionality with climate and, uh, and lack of energy includes scaling up energy access uh, to electricity for labor and time-saving appliances for water supply for irrigation, crop and food processing equipment, early warning systems. Um, in the context of COVID-19, uh, renewable energy is also essential for powering co communications tools to access information on health, but also for homeschooling and to raise awareness about the rising of uh, incidents of uh, gender-based violence. Uh, we also find scaling up clean and low emission cooking um, solutions for heating and uh, for lighting. Um, also mitigate uh, black uh, carbon 
uh, that comes from burning solid fuels and also improves women's health. Supporting women's employment uh, uh, will strengthen diversity in the renewable energy sector, but also support women's entrepreneurship in delivering last mile energy access. Um, uh, international and national advocacy and policy activities are also important for uh, improving the enabling environment. So that's uh, given a, a general context of who we are and um, uh, the, gender, the intersectionality of uh, gender, energy and uh, climate change. Let's now, now, when we talked about the solutions, let's now look at what instruments are currently available. And one of these is the international commitments that we have uh, on gender, energy and, and climate. The first one I'd like to draw your attention to is the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against, uh, against Women, which in there, this is a sort of an international bill of rights. And in there, there is the right to, to uh, electricity. Um, um, uh, Article 14 of the uh, of CEDO uh, allows women the right to electricity. And this is actually, as it's an international treaty, um, both uh, uh, countries um, uh, that have signed up to this uh, have the obligation to deliver on it, but there's also an opportunity to, uh, to report on, on instances through uh, shadow reporting. We have the Beijing uh, Declaration and Platform for Action, which provides a framework uh, for gender mainstreaming in energy policies and, and programs. Um, most importantly also is uh, what's guiding us now is the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in which uh, for the first time you have a standalone goal on energy, ensuring access to affordable, reliable and sustainable and modern energy. This is the first time this is done in any uh, um, global development uh, um, uh, uh, framework. And of course, uh, the, uh, uh, the beauty of the SDGs is that they're interlinked with other SDGs. And uh, so we have the interlinkage with SDG 5 for achieving gender equality and power with women. And of course, SDG 13 uh, for taking uh, urgent access to combat climate, climate change and its impact. And underlying all the SDGs is the principle of leaving no one behind. And of course, the, uh, the interlinkages between them. Um, in the climate uh, change arena, we have the uh, Climate Action Plan for the UNFCC um, and also the Enhanced uh, Lima Work Program that was agreed at uh, COP25, in which governments have agreed to uh, five major actions uh, to deliver on, uh, on uh, gender commitments within the uh, UNFCC framework. Uh, very importantly, also coming out of uh, these commitments, the climate investment funds, which provides billions of dollars for renewable energy uh, 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 programs uh, at country levels, has also adopted a, a gender action plan and also uh, has the obligation to report on it. So this is sort of the enabling uh, pol international policy frameworks that we have uh, and commitments that we are supposed to deliver on.